Hello everyone, and I would like to welcome you to the Introduction to the Tennis Suite webinar. My name is John Bale, and I'm going to be your presenter for today. Uh, you might recognize my voice if you've ever taken any online courses with the BFE before, uh, because I often do instructing as well as course assisting around there. Um, I am the research manager for the Biofeedback Federation of Europe. Uh, I think we were formerly called Biofe Biofeedback Foundation of Europe, but there was a name change that went on I think, in the last year. Um, I've been working with the BFE for uh, at least five years. Um, when it comes to BFE suite creation, I am one of the key people. Chances are, if you own any other BFE suites, I have already played with programming. I've helped to edit it. I might have been even a key figure in making all of the software. Um, it depends on which suite exactly. But what you should get from that is that I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to BFE suites and software, as well as thought technology software in general. I'm really good at the equipment, and I know a heck of a lot when it comes to biofeedback and neurofeedback. Today's presentation is going to be an introduction to the tennis suite. Um, I'm going to be going over an introduction to the suite author. Notice there's only one this time. There's usually several. I'm going to be talking about the purpose of the tennis suite. I'm going to be going over the necessary equipment, the sensors, and the accessories that you need, need to properly run or at least take best advantage of the software. And then I'm going to jump into actually describing the software. So we'll look at that one hits Hertz bins assessment. It's a cell report that shows the data we collect during that assessment, as well as the main focus, which is the training screens and the exercise for the suite. Um, those who purchase the suite, we're hoping they want it for the training reasons, because this is the uh, largest amount of software, and we put a lot of work into it, especially the exercise to use the training screens. Finally, we have the suite documents with so the extra files uh, that are included with the software installation you get. So to start off, let's give you an introduction to Stephanie Nyon. Um, she is the author of the Tennis Suite. She's a former varsity national athlete. She played in the US and Australia. I'm pretty sure it's soccer she played, but I might be mistaken. It could be actually volleyball. Um, since ending her university athletic career, she's been working with at least at elite athletes for at least seven years. She's formerly worked at the Thompson's Clinic with Michael Thompson um, in Toronto. She did optimizer performance for executives, students, and athletes. She has also worked very closely with uh, Dr. Vieta Sue Wilson for a very long time. If any of you are familiar with the optimizing performance and health suite, the BFE cells, we also call it the Sue Wilson suite, um, she is one of the not so well credited authors to that. Uh, Sue Wilson is amazing with all the clinical knowledge, but when it came to programming some of the screens, it was her, Stephanie Nyhan, as well as Lindsay Shaw, who were uh, very big key figures in helping Sue Wilson out. Currently, she works uh, in Calgary, Canada, at the Stu Dawson Clinics, so Myosymmetries Clinic. Uh, she also does a little bit of independent work, I believe, um, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, just helping her finish off a little bit of programming uh, that she's doing uh, in training an NHL athlete since, uh, as of the time of the recording of this, the NHL lockout is still ongoing. Uh, she just seems to have gotten one of the hockey players to sign up with her for her training, and she hopes hopefully that will go well so that it opens up some avenues in that direction for her. Um, the purpose of the suite, if you might not guess, is uh, for training tennis athletes. You can also potentially extend this to squash and badminton players since they use well, very similar rackets and the same sort of game rules, but um, it's mainly focused on tennis players. Um, the suite was made specifically to incorporate a lot of physical and mental exercises specific to tennis players. Um, these are original exercises that are included in the suite that aren't featured in any other suite packages. That includes optimizing performance and health suite does not have any of these. Um, the on-screen monitoring feedback that you use with the equipment is meant to complement these exercises, and these exercises are meant to complement the on-court training. So what I really want you to know is that uh, we put a lot of new little exercises and games in there to help train the athletes in order for them to benefit from this uh, self-regulation training and so that they generalize it to actually on court and so they learn to use it much better and it really gets integrated into their normal play habits. Um, it was a big conversation that uh, Stephanie and I agreed on that we find that uh, most clinicians and trainers are incredibly uncreative when it comes to working with people, especially with biofeedback and neurofeedback. So the goal is that we want to get these exercises in there so that people um, 
would have a new way of teaching and enforcing skills that they want their athletes to learn so that they really do benefit from this. Um, it's not all about just looking at the amplitude go up and down on a bar graph and then getting a feedback animation to run. It's much more complex than that. Uh, some of the exercises do involve in direct interaction with the computer monitor. Some are more heavy on that. And then there are others where the athlete almost doesn't even have to look at the computer monitor because they're really just doing the exercise on their own. And the clinician can sort of look back and forth if they need to, but it might not be necessary. Um. Oh, yeah, and last point. Uh, the goal of the suite is definitely to teach self-regulation with emphasis on breathing and calm focus, but uh, that's for the normal things when it comes to training athletes. Um, so I want you to realize that this suite is mainly meant for training. We don't do very much assessment, although I'm going to talk about a one hertz spins assessment very soon, but if you're looking for a psychophysiological assessment, the suite does not have one. I would advise you to go look to some of our other suites um, or the standard thought tech ones. I know for pro golf and pro baseball suites, they have their own psychological, uh, psychophysiological assessment. There's also the Sue Wilson's Optimizing Performance and Health Assessment, which people love. It's really, really good. And so there's a lot of other options out there, but this is meant specifically for training. So the necessary equipment and sensors and accessories that you need to run the suite uh, first starts off with the encoder. You can use a Procom Infinity or Procom 2 encoders. We have, uh, due to the nature of these different encoders, you know, the Procom Infinity can run eight sensors all at once, whereas the Procom 2 can only run two sensors all at once. Um, that means that there's going to be slightly different sensor configurations and arrangements between the two versions of the suites, either editions. Um, but it's essentially the same sort of training programs and software. In terms of the uh, sensors that you can use to record with, uh, there's the abdominal respiration sensor, which is good for both encoders. And we also have the BVP sensor, the blood volume pulse sensor, that measures heart rate and heart rate variability. Uh, we also look at EMGs, so that's surface electromyography. Uh, for the Procom Infinity encoder, you get to record data from two of these sensors simultaneously. Whereas for the Procom 2 encoder, we only ever look at one EMG sensor. And the placement sites are the frontalis, the trapezius, and the forearm, uh, depending on the exact exercise on the training screen. Um, for the Procom Infinity edition of the suite only, we look at peripheral body temperature. Even then, we barely look at it. It's just a little bit. Uh, for the Procom 2, we just didn't include temperature at all because it just didn't seem worth it. We do look at skin conductance for both of the encoder editions as well. And then finally, we also look at one channel of EEG for both encoders. So that's uh, one EEGZ sensor. Um, the placement site, or at least the active site, is typically at CZ. And I typically mean always, but you can change it for yourself or if you prefer to train at a different site. And then if using the CZ, it's monopolar referential setup with the ground one, with the ground at A1 and reference at A2. All the training screens are used for use with a single monitor setup. So um, we do not have any dual monitors. That's what this big red X here. Um, there's no client's monitor and clinician's monitor. They're separate. It's all put together as one. We're going to start now with the software. And actually, we're starting with the uh, smallest aspect of the software. And this is the 1 hertz bins assessment and Excel report. So there, I said earlier on that um, there is no big psychophysiological assessment in the suite, and this is still true. This 1 hertz bin assessment only records data from that one EEG sensor, and it's meant as a simple assessment to run at the beginning or at the end of a training session. So think of it just as like an, a baseline measurement. Um, it's eyes open, and only lasts three minutes, and it's meant to give uh, you, the clinician or trainer, a general idea of the athlete's EEG amplitude levels for the day, as well as an indication of any sort of uh, anomalous or unusual activity that might be a uh, sort of uh, flag that they should go see someone else who specializes in more uh, full cap EEG and things like that. So when we talk about the general idea of the e athletes' EEG amplitudes, it means that you might want to know if they're, I mean, feeling particularly unfocused. Maybe they had not slept a lot yesterday, so there's going to be, the theta is going to be much higher. Maybe uh, instead of just having a little bit of elevated busy brain, they're having um, the amplitudes above and below that normal busy brain bandwidth even higher. So you might want to um, train a wider range as opposed to only the busy brain. Now these are just things that the 1 hertz bins assessment will indicate to you, and then you can make the appropriate train changes in the training screens according to um, what is necessary. Now the 
Excel report that comes with the one hertz bins assessment is you know, a specialized Excel report that's linked to it. So once you're done recording the assessment, all you have to do is jump into the review mode. You can artifact the data if you feel it necessary. And then you click a button to generate the Excel report, and boom, you have all your little data and statistics in the two graphs. It's easy to read, easy to print out, very quick for analysis. To initiate the one hertz bins assessment, um, it's very straightforward and simple. You open the Biograph Infinity from the main menu, and then you go to that Quick Start button at the top. A new window is going to appear. You select your client from the left-hand list, or you click the Add New Client button. And then from the right-hand list, you go to Categories, select PI Tennis or P2 Tennis, depending on which encoder you're using. So PI is for Procom Infinity, P2 is for Procom 2. And then you'd select the uh, top, they call them favorite, but I really just call them Quick Start Options. You select the top option, which is the Tennis 1 Hertz Bins EET Assessment. And you see the other ones later on that are for training. We'll talk about that later. You select that one, then you click OK to go. Hopefully at this point you already have your client hooked up to the EEG sensor and you have the encoder turned on and all that. There's a second method of initiating the assessment as well, and that's from within the Suite Documents folder. Um, I'll talk about this Documents folder at the very end, but um, Suite Documents is also comes with the installation. It gets installed on your computer. You just go from your desktop, you go to the BFE Suites shortcut, and jump into that Tennis Suite Documents, and go into the Quick Starts folder, then you have the same shortcuts, and you want to choose this top one, this 1 Hertz Bins EEG Assessment. Now, you'd, as usual with EEG, you check your impedance before you actually run the um, assessment. And right now, this is the screen of after the person's checked impedance, and they've already clicked the play button to start recording. And then you'd be able to see the instructions on here, and you'd just be following instructions for the very short three-minute baseline assessment. As it says right here, you just tell your athlete to rest their eyes on the spot, maybe a dot on the wall you put there, or some object, so that it minimizes EEG artifacts from them moving their eyes, and then you just go forward with the recording. This is the standard recording screen. You might be familiar with it if you know the Thompson's uh, general EEG assessment screen, because Stephanie really liked it, and so she had us just throw it into this suite. Um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, tips are just look at the raw EEG line graph at the top, as well as this pink EMG 52 to 58 hertz. So um, big amplitude and stuff will let you know if the person is generating a lot of artifact. You want to avoid the artifacts because that contaminates the real data with uh, muscle. So you just watch this for three minutes, and then at the very end, you go into review mode. So entering review mode is just a quick click. You have to accept at the very end. Uh, no screen selection because it's already been predefined for you. It's the whole point of the quick starts. It's as quick and easy as possible. From within review mode, you then do artifact rejection and then generate the Excel report. I'm not going to get into talking about how you actually do artifact rejection and all that stuff. That's in the software manual. Chances are you might actually know, already know how to do it, so you don't need to really go over that right now. But you would artifact the EG. You can do it manually or automatically, or sorry, automatically, using the automated software, or you can do a combination of both. It's pretty quick and easy. It takes less than two minutes. And then to generate the Excel report, you just go to the little printer icon that's in the um, bar. I think it's called session report, but to me it looks like a printer. Then you choose the generate Excel report button. Obviously, your computer needs to have Microsoft Excel installed on it in order to actually generate the Excel report. Here is the 1 Hertz bins assessment Excel report. At the top, you have the client's name, time, and then you have the two graphs. One is the 1 Hertz bins, so the amplitude for each individual 1 Hertz bins, all the way from 1 to 34 Hertz. And then lower down, you have the standard bandwidth, so the amplitudes uh, for each standard band from that three minutes eyes open recording. You can look at this data, see if it looks normal, see if there's any anomalies, take note of it, and then move on to training once you've done this. I'll turn to the again, if you choose to do this before and after a training session, you can see the differences. It's really up to you. It's three minutes long. It's pretty quick. So now we're going to go into the main chunk, the, uh, the meat of the tennis suite, and that's the training screens and the exercises. Now these training screens and exercises, they work together Certain screens have sort of elaborate exercise and activities that you do with the client, and others are much more simple and straightforward. Either way, we have instructions included on screen and in a clinical manual that tell you what to do exactly, what to look at, what to set. Uh, we've put a lot of effort into writing out this information because that's what people seem to want. They want information, they want instructions, they want someone to help them along. And this is pretty good. Um, up here in this corner is a little, it looks like just a picture of a tennis player is about to uh, spike the ball, but this is just a, a still photo of one of the animations that we use. The whole training uh, screens for the tennis suite come with um, 
tennis themed videos and animations to run with the training activities. So that's one of those extra little features that's included in the screen. So it's going to seem complicated, but I'm going to show you, I mean, it'll make sense as I show you more of the software and the pictures. So these training screens that we have in the tennis suite are divided into predefined quick start groupings. We call them quick start groupings because you select them from that quick start menu, just like I showed you for starting assessment. But so these screens, these screens have been placed into groups automatically. The screens are grouped according to complementary modalities and training goals. So, I mean, the respiration heart rate sensors, we put them in the similar training screens because you usually use them together and they have similar training goals where you slow down the breathing and then bring up the heart rate variability. That's exactly what we mean. This predefinition is helpful for you, the clinician trainer, because it makes it quicker to load a session and it also makes an automatic suggestion of what sort of direction you train with someone. The screens are Define such that you progress from very simple basic skills, you're teaching an athlete, onto more complex uh, training skills and exercises. So it goes from easy to hard in the most natural sense, and we just plan that out for you to make it easier for you. If you want to ignore a bunch of goals, it's easy to jump into a different screen or choose a screen you prefer that the athlete works best with and then do that. But this is just how we decided to define it in advance. Um, these quick start groupings slight, uh, are slightly different for the Procom Infinity Edition and the Procom 2 Edition of the suite, just because, again, that sensor limitation. You can only record with two sensors using the Procom 2. For the Procom Infinity, you can record with up to eight. So the goals and the combinations are a little bit different. Right here, we actually have the list of the different quick starts for the Procom Infinity and Procom 2. The very, I mean, the first listing is actually the one hertz spins EEG assessments. Just ignore that. That's not for training. It's everything else that's right below it. So if you look at both lists, you can see they're quite similar. Although, um, notice that for the PROCOM 2, there's the Busy Brain and SMR, which are two separate quick start options or groupings. And for the PROCOM Infinity, Busy Brain and SMR is one. And then at the same time, you notice for the PROCOM Infinity, there's this routines one that doesn't appear in the other. Um, for the PROCOM Infinity, these quick starts indicate the general focus of training. We're going to be focusing on this EEG or this imagery heart rate variability and respiration, muscle awareness, stuff like that, but it doesn't actually tell you what sensors to use. So you need to refer to the clinical manual for that. Um, whereas for the PROCOM 2, because you can only record with up to two sensors at a time, we've embedded it directly in this name exactly what you're going to be recording with. So EEG and breathing, or EEG breathing again, heart rate variability and breathing. You'll notice we actually use breathing and respiration for actually every single one of these training sessions. That's fine and easy because breathing is really important and you can't really combine many other sensors to get better than that. Uh, another, okay, uh, I've already mentioned the fact that there's this routines quick start for Procom Infinity, right there. Um, it does not appear for the Procom 2, and that's because it just it's uh, meant to be used with, well, almost all the modalities all at once. It's essentially sort of a, a mastery of the other training quick starts. So you might have started with the first five here, and it's all sort of like learning different goals that are separate from each other. But once you get to the routines, it's combining these goals together to be something uh, as a mastery of the training, self-regulation, things like that. Um, for Procom 2, routines doesn't exist. Uh, okay, I already mentioned this. To initiate a training session, it's almost the exact same thing as with the one hertz bins assessment. So you'd open up the Biograph Affinity main menu, and you go to this quick start quick start window would appear, choose your client from the left-hand list. On the right, you choose your category, so that PI tennis or P2 tennis, depending on your encoder. And then you choose the quick start session that you want. So whichever one you want to train is how you select, you plug the sensors into the encoder, and then you click OK. If you're using the Procom Infinity, just refer to the manual to let you know which sensors you want to be using, or at least which ones are probably best to use, although you can often monitor almost all of them. There's also a second method of initiating the exact same training sessions, and that's from, again, within the Tennis Suite documents. So you just go to the BFE Suites icon on your, short, on your desktop, and go into the Tennis Suite documents, jump into the Quick Starts folder, and boom, here they are. I mentioned this already, but the Procom 2 edition, the names of the sensors you want to use for each session is obvious. It's directly in their name. For Procom Infinity, it's less obvious, so refer to either one of these manuals and I'll let you know. So how do we use the screens that are within these quick starts? Um, well, as I said, each screen 
contains instructions directly embedded on it. So it makes it that much easier for you, the clinician or the trainer. It lets you know what you need to look at. It also lets you know what you need to tell the athlete to do. If there are not very many instructions in there, it actually says refer to the clinical manual, in which case you go into the clinical manual, check up that exact screen, and then it gives you a full description of exactly what you need to do for the goal of the exercise as well as how you interact with the screen and what you need to set at the very beginning. Um, on the right right here is just actually a picture of one of the pages from the clinical manual. So it actually shows a photo of one of the screens. I think this is for the dual tracking game, which we'll talk about later. And then there's just all these instructions before and after it, and it's just page 7 of, I think, 40. Either way, for you, the clinician who gets nervous, who's not sure, who forgets, or things are not very obvious, these instructions and this clinical manual makes it obvious. We let you know what you need to do, not letting you just sit there to figure it out on your own. We even tell you in the clinical manual the exact details of what sort of numbers you want to go up and down and check and all that stuff. Um, for pretty much all the quick starts, screen one, or the first screen of those predefined sets of screens, is used for quick baseline measure. Um, just to collect some statistics, and you can use those statistics then as a base for threshold markers on other screens. Um, below is like an actually an example from the Procom Infinity. I think there's heart rate variability and respiration. So there's some instructions right here, how you do the assessment. Essentially, this person just looks at the tennis ball, record for one to three minutes, get some nice easy data, and then once you press the stop button, it brings up the statistics window. The stats have already been pre-programmed into every single one of the quick starts, so you don't have to go uh, defining them yourself. They're already there, so the means from the recording session pop up, and you can use these means um, for the actual training screens, as well as use them as references to see if the person's you know, doing better or worse whenever you click the stop session button. Um, one of the features that some people don't seem to use very much, but Stephanie loves it, is the fact that when you do automatically click to stop recording session, the statistics window will pop up. So you can actually start training in like spurts of three or four or five minutes with an athlete. Then you press the stop recording button, and it brings up the statistics. It lets you know how they're doing in terms of these amplitudes. And then you can compare it to the previous sessions. Um, it's really easy to use, especially because after the statistics window, click close, you can save the session or not. I mean, it might not be necessary, so click no. And then you're going to have a window that says, do you want to record a session with the exact same configuration? You just click yes, and then all the exact same screens reload completely. So you just keep doing that over and over again. So for training six or seven successive sessions, you can see how the statistics change over those three or four minutes. It's a great way of just comparing from session to session. We also advise you to do that because a lot of these exercises work great. You stop the recording for three minutes to see how they do, and then you just retry again immediately to see if they can beat those previous scores that they had. Right here is a quick sample of the heart rate variability and breathing quick start, I think, from the Procom 2 encoder. Yes, yeah, Procom 2. So the first screen is quite similar to what we saw before, just a baseline assessment. And then there's just these next four screens, which go from very simple goals, training goals, to more complicated ones. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of each screen, because uh, we have a lot of training screens. which is just too much information. But this is just an example of how um, we show different statistics and graphs as well. There's always instructions on screen to let you know what to do. And some of the screens have more interaction, where the where the athlete's directly watching the monitor and interacting with it to get feedback, and others are less so, where they're barely watching it at all. So screen two right here is where they're to slow down their breathing, the breathing patient, you can monitor using the data. Screen three is where we try to get them to maintain sort of a slower respiration rate while they're being distracted by playing this game. It's a dual tracking game that pops up. Again, we're still going to talk about it later, so I'm not going to explain it right now. Screen four is where we're actually doing counting distractions where the person's not even paying attention to the screen. They're doing an exercise with their eyes closed. And then screen five is where they're actually more directly looking at the screen where they're um, practicing elevating their low frequency percent of total power by maintaining that very slow, even relaxed breathing rates in order to get this uh, tennis animation to run. Some screens, as I've said before, do lack instructions. So it's important to refer to the clinical guide because they'll tell you exactly what you need to do for the screen. Right here is an example of uh, one of the training screens from the Busy Brain SMR Quick Start for the Procom Infinity. Obviously, there's no words on here, so there's just a bunch of bar graphs and thresholds, and the clinical manual tells you how to set these, what values you set them to, and what sort of instructions they give to the athlete. Now, training exercises are embedded directly in all these screens. Each screen has a specific sort of goal of what you want to teach the athlete, and most of them have exercises which um, enhance that goal or make it um, 
a lot better for enforcing uh, the skill that you want the athlete to learn. These are just some names listed off that we have. Um, I'm not going to describe each of them in detail because then essentially you can take that goal and not purchase the suite. Um, so we're going to leave a little bit of this hidden and up to mystery because that's the whole point. We do actually want to sell the suite as well. But, um, so we have like cue card exercises, which is not, it's not just person reading cue cards. It's much more complicated than that for Brisbane SMR. So person learning to breathe as they're striking the ball, one of the animations, muscle awareness exercises, which I have to talk about. And a bunch of these other ones, they all have different names and have uh, different levels of interaction with the monitor or not. At the very end, you can see that it says PI or P2, so Procom Infinity or Procom 2. And some of these are exercises are for one encoder and some are for the other, and some are for both encoders. Um, as an aside, I'm actually thinking of uh, getting a few more of these exercises to be uh, on both encoders, depending on how we switch up the modalities and things like that. Um, but that'll be something to do in the future. Now I'm going to actually explain to you I think three of the exercises we have, just to give quick examples of how um, one would use one of these training screens and why it's, it's, the training is so much better with these exercises that we have. And so this is just a quick example of the muscle awareness task. Um, this is where a person is ideally training their muscles using the muscle sensors. This is Procom Infinity because you see there's a lot of different types of data being recorded simultaneously. This uh, muscle tension awareness is also in the Procom 2 uh, version of the suite. Um, the athlete ideally is not looking at this monitor very much. Initially, they're just um, practicing using their muscle tension with their eyes open, and they'll try to do it with their eyes closed. The whole goal is you really want them to, to be extremely aware of what muscle tension, uh, what it means in terms of the values you collect, so that they know how relaxed they need to be, and so that they can quickly identify how relaxed they are or are not. Um, so. The muscle tension awareness is actually a set of different exercises that you do in series. Ideally, you start where you put the sensors on the person's upper trapezius um, and or the forearm and frontalis, depending on whether you're using one or two sensors. And you first start with the person with their eyes open, and you tell the athlete that you want them to bring up their muscle tension to 75% of the max tension. You never want to say 100% because then they're going to try as hard as possible, and that might actually end up hurting. So. Once they get to that 75% level, you'd actually mark it down on these little bar graphs right here with the thresholds just to know exactly what level they're at. And then you'd have the athlete close their eyes and have them go back to low or no tension and then have them bring them back up their muscle tension readings to that 75% value. Um, when they're there, they just have to like lightly indicate it without unsettling themselves as much as possible and without opening their eyes. And you let them know whether they're right or not and then have them keep trying to redo it, relax, for 10 seconds, and then bring it up to 75%. Keep doing that until they can actually get that 75% muscle tension consistently, as it was demonstrated by where you left these threshold markers on the line graphs. Now, you do that so they're aware of what a high level of tension is, and then you slowly bring it down. So you repeat that whole exercise, but with 50% of the max tension. Where initially, they have their eyes open. They can you know, bring their muscle tension up to 50%, and you mark the thresholds. And they have their eyes closed, and then they do 10 second periods where they try to bring up to 50%, and relax again, and bring back. And you'd let them know if they're correctly achieving that 50% or not. If they can't do it correctly, then clearly there's a problem. And you have to keep redoing it until they do get it. Repeat that for 50%, and then 25% max tension, and then 5% max tension. And this is really the whole point of the exercise. They're learning to be aware of their own muscle tension, and this computer monitor data is just secondary. We just use it for markers and for you, the clinician's awareness, but not so much theirs. They don't need to see it very much. So now we're going to move on to the next sort of exercise we use with a screen, and this is beating your opponent, busy brain. Uh, we've designed the screen such that there's these three bar graphs on the screen. It's beta, sorry, it's theta, <laughs> busy brain, and EMG noise, which is that high artifact. The point of the game is that you want the athlete to keep their amplitudes for the theta, busy brain, and EMG noise below these threshold markers. You can set the thresholds according to the initial baseline you do with that screen number one at the beginning of your training session so you know exactly where the means are and you want them to rest below that when they're doing nothing. So as the game progresses, they have to keep their theta, busy brain, and EMG amplitudes below their separate thresholds. If they can hold them below each of the separate thresholds simultaneously for three consecutive seconds, they get a point, so your point's right here. If the opponent, if they, however, cannot keep the three amplitudes simultaneously below these uh, bar graph thresholds for three consecutive seconds, then the opponent gets a point. 
And so uh, the game is slightly hard because it's against them. It's the whole point. This is actually screen number five, so it's one of the sort of higher level training goals where they really learn to bring down the theta and basic brain and to hold that for an extended period. And so the game is just essentially them playing against themselves, although we point it as their points and the opponent's points. And there's noise associated to these buzzers. So whenever uh, they get a point for themselves, there's like an audience clapping. Yay! And if the opponent gets a point, it's actually sort of like a buzzer. It lets them know they made a mistake. There's a tennis animation of the ball coming back and forth and the tennis racket hitting it. This is just sort of a nice little feedback in there that only runs when the theta busy brain and EMG noise um, amplitudes are all simultaneously below this bar graph. So that's just like a feedback left to know when they're getting it correct. But it's mostly about these points. We also have a little timer up here just because you want to do this again in training bouts. So you train for about three minutes, and once it's at three minutes, you press the stop button. You can see how many points they have, so just record that down. Maybe record down the average means they did get for the busy brain theta and EMG noise. And then you'd retrain using the same screen to see if they can beat their score, or if they can get the point score lower, or if they can beat their means. Again, you can use this timer to check when three minutes is up. Now we have this breathing with distractions, a.k.a. the dual tracking game. And I've mentioned this a few times earlier. It's actually a special little video game that's embedded in the software, although if you have to manually open it yourself, there's instructions on screen to do that. The point of this game is where the person's been training to slow down the respiration. And so you'd set these dual bar graphs for this respiration rate, and you want them ideally to have the respiration between these dual bar graphs. You set them to an appropriate value based on the training. And then you'd let them play the video game that's going to pop up automatically with this screen. The idea is that they're playing this game, and they just need to practice keeping their breathing nice and relaxed. The game itself is uh, pretty straightforward. They are the blue ball. Ideally, they have to be able to interact with the computer, by the way, so they need like a mouse cursor. Um, so they are the blue ball that moves with the mouse of the cursor, and they just need to keep touching this um, blue square. Every time they touch it, they get five points. Right down here, it tracks their points as well as their best score. Every time that they do successfully connect the two uh, blue shapes together, a red ball appears, and these red balls are moving around constantly. So as they get, as they play this game more, it becomes harder because more red balls appear, and so it gets more tough. But this whole time, they're supposed to be maintaining the relaxed breathing within that bar graph. So this is, again, it's a challenge. You want to see if they can do this, like maintain the relaxed breathing even though there's something else going on. And this game only gets infinitely harder. So as they play more, as they get more involved, the more they have to sort of concentrate on doing the breathing because it gets harder to do that. And once they do lose the game, then they can just click a restart button that appears and you can try, and try to beat their best score. Um, they don't need to beat the game. Uh, the game is infinite, so it will go on forever. And so it's not the point. I think it's once they get about actually over 100, they can stop doing it because they're pretty good at staying relaxed as long as they are keeping their breathing relaxed while playing this game. So that was three examples of the exercises we have. Again, these exercises are helping to um, enforce what you want to teach the client. And so sometimes they do interact with the screen a lot, and sometimes they don't. But it's really the whole point is that it's a new way of training someone. It's something, it's something more creative than just a straightforward, normal training stuff we've seen a lot of other suites that gets a little bit frustrating, a little bit tiring, and a little bit completely uninteresting for the athlete. We're going to move on to the actual last part of the suite now, just a quick description of the suite documents. Here's a little screen capture of what's in the uh, Procom Infinity version. It's almost the exact same thing in the Procom 2 version. Um, so the tennis suite comes with suite documents on your computer. And these documents are meant to be help you make the best use of your suite, and they are extremely helpful. So many people don't bother using them, which is stupid. And that's why I have to let you know. So there's a software manual, which explains all the technical know-how about the suite. So how do you initiate a session? How do you actually plug the equipment together? How do you review a session? How do you artifact data? How do you click this? How do you move a threshold? Technical stuff. That's the release that's using the computer. And then we also have the clinical manual, which really lets you know how to interact with the training screen and how to, what to tell the client of what they need to do, or descriptions of what values they're looking for or training towards, as well as descriptions of each exercise and how you use it with the screen. So it's like it's the clinical stuff. It's how you train the person as opposed to how you do the technical click clicks on the computer screen. With the suite documents are also a few files, which are just separate printouts of certain exercises. And then we also have some sample client data, so you can quickly review or replay the session when you first get the suite to get a good idea of what data looks like and what the screens look like. And it's also some well, the quick starts of reference and a few other reference things as well. So this actually comes, brings to an end, should I say, this introduction to the tennis suite. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who purchased this recording. And 
I'd like to, well, I hope that you get the most out of the tennis suite because uh, Stephanie and I and myself think it's a great addition as well as really useful for the clinician trainer because we tell you what to do. We really give you some great advice and great ideas of how to train your clients in order to instill those self-regulation, that focus, and that calm interaction, and the slow breathing, and all that good stuff. So again, for me, John Bale, the research manager for the Biofeedback Federation of Europe, I'd like to thank you again for listening, and I thank you very much for your patronage. Bye-bye.